Hi guys and uh, welcome back to my channel. Today we're going to be reviewing the F4 flight controller from Matek and the PDB that pairs with it. So this is kind of the same idea as the DYS uh, F4 and the, the DYS uh, F30 amp ESCs which just uh, plug in like just on top of each other with pins. And this is the same concept but you got ribbons here which will actually have them connect to each other which is pretty awesome I think. And um, it looks promising. I'm, I'm very excited about this. The finish looks good. The board looks clean. Um, so this is going to be a very fun one to test. So we're going to be testing these for noise. And we are going to put them together as how they are supposed to come. And you can also buy this separately. They do come separately. But you can get this and you could place it on any other flight control you would like to use. But it is uh, compatible for this board to make your life a lot easier right here. This is the Matek F405 flight controller from Matek and this guy is the Matek FCHUB6S PDB and we're gonna take a look at the PDB first and then we're gonna take a look at the flight controller and after we're done with the specifications and the pads and the layouts then we will jump right into the noise testing and comparing it to the HGLRC F4 flame all right so right now let's just take a look at the input voltages so we can run 9 to 27 volt which is a 3 to 6 s lipo which is awesome the maximum current for each pad which is rated here is 30 amps this is a continuous and the burst is 46 amps each so that's pretty good as well the 5 volt regulator is 2 amps and the 10 volt regulator is max at 2 amps which is more than enough the current sensor in here, the, the shunt resistor right there, is rated for, it can measure up to 184 amps, which is awesome, by 3,300 3, millivolts, which is more than enough, really. So, let's take a look at the layout and the pads. So, in theory, people would put their battery terminals in the back, and let's just check out the layout. So, beta fly, as we all know, motor 1, correct, motor 2, correct, motor 3, yes, 4. So, the layout is awesome. The pads are big. Uh, it's a lot bigger than the uh, HDLRCF4 flame, which is pretty good, and it's going to make your life a lot easier sol soldering these in. Now, let's take a look at this side right here. So, on this side, we get ground, current, and ground. So, what is this current? Current, this would go... Uh, this would be the current reading so you would run this if you wanted to run this to your flight controller which has osd this would go on one of your uarts rx ports so this would go into the in rx which is the receive of the flight controller and they give us another ground and vcc vcc i believe it's not filtered it's just a direct input from the battery and we get ground and five volt which is the five volt regulator here which is good um okay we got signal two Let's take a this look at this here. So if you're not going to use the flight controller that comes with it, you would solder these right here to your flight controller to make your life a lot easier if you wanted to. So this is just basically routing these to here, um, which is awesome. Or you could just take your signal and put it directly to your flight controller. So you have two ways of doing it, and just it just comes down to you and how clean you want it to be and, and what's the best choice for you. And they give you another pad here for 5 volt and the 10 volt, which is amazing. So you get two 10 volt pads and you get, I think, three. Uh, yeah, you get three 5 volt pads, which is plenty enough, which is, it's actually very awesome. I really like this. This looks promising. Now, let's take a look here. We have ground, 5 volt, ground, VCC. And again, this is the raw input from the battery. And I don't believe it's filtered in any sort of way in here. And we also have another ground. And we have 10 volt for your VTX or whatever you want. So... This is very good. I'm really liking this. And that is it for this part. Oh no, let's just see what it comes with actually. All it really comes with is just some standoffs. That's it. So this is how this comes. Let's put this guy to the side now and let's jump to the flight controller. So this is obviously an F4 flight controller from the name. So that is awesome. And it's rocking an OSD. So that is very good as well. And since it's an F4 flight controller that means we can have a max 32k gyro update frequency and as well as a 16k pid loop frequency which is pretty awesome as well um so we have this button here and this button is for your boot mode so if you brick it you would just jump into boot mode right there and then you'd be totally fine you could just reflash it and everything will work out just fine now as i read this has no regulators on board so whatever you're going to be connecting to this should be coming from regulator from the PDB. 
So uh, let's talk about the ports here. We have an RSSI port, we have a current port, we have VCC ground, three volt, five volt, TX1, TX2. So we have up to five UARTs here, or six, I believe, six UARTs. I don't know if the USB is connected to the first, but I believe it is. So you, you have a total of, we could just say five UARTs, I believe, yeah, if I'm correct here. Let's take a look at these. We have SBUS here, RX2, RX3, RX4, uh, three, TX3, RX4, TX3, which is awesome. And here we have an LED, and here's a 5 volt, and here's a 5 volt, and here's the buzzer's ground. So this would be buzzer, and this would be LED. All right, and these work together like this, as you can see the spacing here. And this is awesome right here. So you get, I believe this is going to be a 5 volt for your receiver. And if you don't, if your receiver does not take 5 volt, then you would give it 3.3 volt right here. So S bus and I bus, I believe, go here. Spectrum, I don't know. I have not checked the sheet, but uh, you'll figure it out very easy. And you get your signals and you get a ground for signal. That's pretty awesome. But we're going to be using the signals that come on the PDB to make our life a lot easier. And um, I believe this right here, so let's just take a look at this side now actually because I just noticed this. So the cam, the yellow wire from the camera would go here, 5 volt ground, that'll power up your camera and it'll allow it to be routed through here. So the camera would come in here, go to the OSD and then pop out of the VTX. And this is VTX which is not the power so be careful here. This is the VTX yellow line that would go to your VTX and this is ground if you wanted to ground it from here. So that's very good right there and i believe that is it oh no we have the other side so here we have the ribbon and this is the ribbon that will connect it to the pdb with no soldering which is pretty awesome so all you got to do is you would pull this back here and you just got to be very gentle very careful and that's it you pull it back you stick it through and then you would just close this right up so it's awesome uh here we have an sd card disk expansion so we can record all of our black black box logs to here if you ever needed to uh, hopefully we won't need to here and you just have here you have also your signals you can you could even solder them here if you wanted to and a 5 volt in the ground which I believe is the same thing on this side yeah and that's it for this board so right now what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to put it together put it on the bench and we are going to induce noise and see how good it copes and we're going to see if this flickers if uh, like the F4 flame did or not and then we're going to put both of them next to each other compare them and see how they are and yeah let me put them together and I'll be right back alright guys so everything is set up and I'm just going to tell you quickly what we will be measuring we're going to be measuring the voltage spike and the noise that's coming back from the ESC and motor and I have set up the noisiest setup I found which is to be a racer start 35 amp MS series ESC with the Emacs 2205S motor so that generates the most amount of noise I've tested many motors I have in the house from DYS to T motor to brother hobby to a bunch of them so this was the noisiest setup and I'm sticking to it and um, we are, so like I was saying, we're going to measure the uh, voltage spikes and noise coming in back direct from the ESC. And then we're going to measure the 10 volt regulator, which is connected to the VTX, see how much noise actually leaks through that voltage regulator. So we're going to be testing the 10 volt regulator. And then we're also going to be measure, testing the 5 volt regulator. And we're also going to be recording the FPV footage to see what goes on. And that is it. This is all going to be without any low ESR capacitors. And we're just doing the test run as we did with the HGLRC F4 Flame. And we will compare the HGLRC F4 Flame with the Maytech here. And later on, once the DYS um, F4 comes in the mail uh, with its ESC, then we'll also compare those. We'll do th all three of them. We'll just compare each of all three of those. Nick, oh, we will compare all three of those together and see which one is the best. So let's get started.
Alright guys, so as we just saw, we had flickers, but it wasn't as bad as the F4 flame. Those regulators are holding up very well, but there's still some of that noise uh, escaping through and hitting the, I believe, I believe it's touching the OSD, or it could be touching the VTX. It's very difficult to actually pinpoint right now. So what we're going to do now is I'm actually going to add a 470 microfarad low ESR capacitor that is rated for 25 volts. And then we're going to see if that clears it up. And uh, on the F4 flame, um, the test flight, I had some, I had some noise. I had a lot of noise, kind of. So I am going to uh, be uploading that video soon to show you guys. So it, I think this is the same concept here, but it's less noise. It's it's a lot. I think it's very noticeably less noise than the F4 flame. So right now I'm gonna add the capacitor and let's check it out real quick. So that was a huge difference, huge difference. And again, just like the F4 flame, the capacitors, these capacitors actually just do magic. So it was just basically gone. All, all, all noise was absolutely gone. So I believe, but I'm not sure. I think also on this one, one 470 microfarad low ESR capacitor on the battery terminal could solve it. Not sure yet. Um, I'm going to do that on the F4, see how it works over there. If it works on the F4, then it's going to work here 100%. Uh, if not, then you might step up to a thousand, and uh, I think that should clear it up. I don't, I don't think you should go into uh, putting an uh, ESC on each uh, capacitor on each ESC. I, I don't think you're going to have the need for that because, as you saw, the regulators they're just holding up very beautiful, but that noise is still seeping through. And don't forget, I have the noisiest setup. So uh, other ESCs and motor combinations, they might have no noise at all. So this is just the absolute worst case scenario, which is I what, what is what I'm testing here for. So as basic conclusion, as the conclusion right now of what I have came up to, this will be less noisy than the HDLRC F4 flame because of the 10 volt regulator there. And um, and it's doing very well. It's doing a very good job, actually. I'm very impressed. I really like this. This is going to be on my next build. And I'm not going to put a low ESR capacitor. I'm going to put also a very noisy motor on there. And we're going to fly it and then see what is... Hopefully, we don't even need a capacitor. But if we're going to end up needing a capacitor, I'll test uh, which capacitor. Either 470 microfarad, 1000. And if those don't work, then we're going to have to put one on each ESC. And I hope we don't have to go to that. So... Wait for my upcoming video, we will be comparing this guy with the HDLRC F4 flame. Then later on we will be doing the DYS F4 uh, all-in-one flight controller review just like I did with this one in the HDLRC. And then we'll have them all three laid out in front of us and compare each and every one of them. Hopefully, maybe something will come out by then, something new, because these things just keep coming out like crazy now. So that's going to conclude it for this video, guys. And I really hope you guys enjoyed it. And I will see you next time. And please don't forget to like and subscribe. See you guys.